Hey there, I'm Dan Martell, serial entrepreneur, investor, and creator of SaaS Academy. In this episode, I'm gonna share with you the five decisions that your prospects make in their mind before buying your product to help you increase the win rates on your sales demos and really just better train your salespeople if you're moving from founder-led sales to a sales team-led sales. And be sure to stay to the end where I'm gonna share with you how to get access to my Rocket Demo Builder to help you close deals twice as fast at twice the win rate. So recently I was uh, doing a coaching call with one of my SaaS Academy clients and they were frustrated because they just hired a new junior account exec, essentially a salesperson, and they weren't closing at the win rate that they were hoping to. So. I sat down and kind of understood kind of their challenges, asked them about their training program, and realized at a high level, they just never explained the five decisions that the prospect needs to make that needs to be true for them to feel comfortable to move forward and buy from them. Once I showed them those five and they explained it to their sales rep, within two weeks, they increased their conversions by 20%. So what I wanna share with you today is exactly what I shared with them to help you understand the psychology and the steps involved in getting people to buy from you and your, your sales team. Number one, trustworthy. At the end of the day, if you don't come across as a sales individual, so I'm just gonna say you as in your sales team, if they don't come across as somebody that's trustworthy, then you're not gonna get the deal. For example, how many times have you talked to somebody trying to sell you stuff and all you can smell is their commission breath? They're like super like salesy and they're not listening and they're just trying to get you to buy stuff that you know you don't even need. At the end of the day, if the person doesn't feel like you understand them, that you understand the reality, that you're not trustworthy, in regards to the way you're talking. That, that if I feel like you're just gonna sell me anything, I'm not gonna buy. So the first thing above all else is how do you establish that trust right off the bat? Number two, does the product solve their problem? The biggest mistake that junior salespeople make is that when they're showing people a product tour, they're essentially touring the product, they're not demoing the solution. The way I think about it is I need to truly understand the frustrations, the pains, the challenges the prospect has in regards to their reality so that I can customize the way I'm going to show our product to get them to understand that our solution can solve their problem. If that's not present, if there's anything left out, if they just feel like you can get 70% of this thing solved but not the other 30%, even if you could, this is the sad part, when you actually do some like audits on sales calls, even if you could, because you're like, oh my gosh, you forgot to say this and we actually solved that problem, they're not gonna buy. You need to make sure that you truly understand their full spectrum of needs and use your product demo to demonstrate how your features solve their problems to deliver the benefit that they're driving for. That doesn't exist, there's no sale. Number three, is it affordable? Now I know that you're thinking, this thing is a no brainer. Everybody should be buying this. This is, should be flying off the shelves. Like every demo should close 100% win rate. Here's the reality. Uh, you know, they have, your prospects have other decisions. They're looking at the competitive landscape. They're evaluating your solution against doing nothing because the reality is, is that is an option. So it's not about, do you add enough value? Is it, do they feel it? comparing themselves to the alternatives, the competitive set to decide if the ROI is there. Is it affordable is a real thing? I think sometimes salespeople are like, this is so cheap, this is a no brainer. No, there's real realities, there's budget realities, there's their implementation costs that you're not even considering around affordability. It's not just the money, right? It's not about just like writing a check and giving it. It's, is this product gonna make me work a lot? right? That's the affordability. Can I afford the time and or financial investment to get this thing to deploy so that I can get the results? So affordable is a big part. Number four, is the company dependable? Is your company dependable? Think about this. If I'm going to buy a solution, I've been burned so many times in the startup world where I invest time, energy, deploy a technology, you know, some weird marketing tool, and all of a sudden the company shuts down or their funding doesn't happen and they like go on life support, their support starts to just be horrendous, whatever it is. So what I'm looking for now, before I make a decision, do they have a good financial background? Are they bootstrapped? Because typically if they're bootstrapped and they've been around for a long time, 
it's more stable than short, not been around a long time, high funding, especially if you're gonna invest a lot of time and energy. Case studies, you know, are other people out there like me, in my, you know, if I'm the prospect, using this product and I'm like, oh, okay, so they trust that person, they must be dependable. Do you as a salesperson, do what you say you're gonna do. If you say I'm gonna follow up with the material and it's a day later, then you've just given them a little hint that you're not as dependable as you said. If you're saying at the beginning of your demo call, your sales call, this is what we're gonna accomplish today and you don't do that and you kind of use that as a bait and switch, you're not dependable. Sometimes it's, there's something wrong with the company. The reviews, you're not leveraging reviews like CapTerra or other sites like that to build a public kind of uh, facing kind of review site for trust and, and um, credibility in the market. So you need to ask yourself from a dependability point of view, am I demonstrating or do I have the assets to be able to demonstrate to a prospect that we are? Because if not, you got to fill that. Your salesperson can't sell against that if there's a gap. Number five, is it a now thing? For me, when it comes to sales, if you ever hear somebody say, this sounds great, why don't you send me a proposal, send me the information, I'll think about it and get back to you. Or somebody says, hey, we evaluated it and it just doesn't feel like it's a now thing. The reason most of the time that that happens is because you didn't push the pain. And what I mean by that is you didn't talk about the impact of their challenges, frustrations, or pains in their business models, or the lack of results that they want to achieve and talk about quantifying that pain. So if you can't help them understand why this software, this deployment is a now thing, then you're never gonna be able to get them to pull out their credit card and buy your technology. So understanding that really to me, the sale is made at the beginning, it's in the setup, it's in the frame, and at the end, you're gonna hear these objections and those only show up because you didn't do the, the, the work, you need to, talk to them about their timelines and understand that like we need to show them that if they solve this it's a sequence of success and using our technology will help them get to that outcome that they're looking for and always understand that there's a business outcome they're trying to achieve and then there's a personal outcome which is more you know about them that a lot of salespeople don't even understand if you're going to help somebody manage people better big better buying decisions, improve the sales velocity as a VP of sales. Those things are gonna reflect positively on the individual as well as the business. They're also thinking about themselves, about getting recognition and, and, and potentially getting promotion, et cetera. And if you don't speak to any of that, then why would they make that a now thing when they can just do what they've been doing now, make some incremental improvements and maybe revisit things in the future. So figuring out how do you communicate and create a sense of urgency to front load, prioritize your solution before others is a key thing that all great salespeople have mastered. So quick recap, five core decisions that people make before they buy your SaaS product. Number one, are you trustworthy? Number two, does the product solve my problem? Number three, is it affordable? Number four, is the company dependable? And number five, is it a now thing? So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I wanna share with you an exclusive download called the Rocket Demo Builder. Now it is a worksheet with all the different five hot principles that you need to understand to really deliver a Rocket Demo to help you close your deals twice as fast. If you implement each one of those steps in your next call for yourself or for your team, you're going to increase your win rate. So be sure to click the link below to download your copy. And if you found this video useful, be sure to smash the like button, subscribe to my channel. If there's anybody that uh, you care about that you think this could serve, feel free to share this with them directly. And as per usual, I wanna challenge you to live a bigger life and a bigger business, and I'll see you next Monday. And you're gonna learn how to train your salespeople better.